Welcome to our How to Add Seam Allowance in Affinity Designer. We are going to go ahead and get started. Make sure you change the units that you're working in to inches or centimeters, whatever you're working on. Select the size that you will be working on. Only one size at a time is best to work on. And let's get started. I'm going to take this pants pattern here and I want to add seam allowance. The original seam allowance of this pattern, the Grow With Me Pajamas by Ellie and Mac, is half an inch seam allowance. Let's say you wanted to add a half an inch to that so you can have three quarters of an inch seam allowance, which is pretty generous. Um, might help if you have material that rolls a lot or you just like extra seam allowance. You can also add just a, a quarter seam allowance so you have a total of a half inch. But remember you're adding to whatever the pattern already had. If it didn't have seam allowance, then you can add seam allowance to it. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to do the optional step, which is to duplicate the pattern piece so we can see where the original pattern piece is. Control J, and that's our original pattern piece. I'm gonna go ahead and come over to our stroke, and it's currently black. Let's go ahead and change my duplicated piece uh, to blue. It is in four point, uh, so let's go ahead and leave it as that here and now that I've duplicated that piece what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the contour tool I'm going to click the miter and force close the radius is where you get to put in the amount of seam allowance that you're adding I'm adding half an inch I write it in decimal form click enter and you'll see now that my pattern piece has increased but if you notice, although my pattern piece increased, I still have this box um, around where the original pattern piece was. And if I, I take out that uh, duplicate here for a second, uh, just to show you, if it still has that box around here. And that's actually because you, your lines are still where the original pattern piece is. In order to change that, see if I come back to the contour, it now shows the outline of where it is contouring. In order to kind of merge those lines together and be able to edit your new seam allowance line using nodes or anything like that, you need to bake the appearance. Baking the appearance is making that inner line meet the contoured line on the outside. You could, and now you could edit it um, using nodes. If I click on that, I see all the nodes on the new contoured line there. But you can see if I bring back the original pattern in here, you do see that the seam allowance did increase. And that was just kind of to show you that it did increase. You don't need that original pattern piece. You can just delete it. But make sure you do put a note here at the bottom. Um, let's increase our text size so we can actually read it. Um, increased seam allowance or something something along those lines by half an inch new seam allowance and the old seam allowance was a quarter inch so if I increased it by a half inch my new seam allowance is uh, three-fourths of an inch on there just make sure you make a note of that so when you go to sew this up you know that this pattern piece has increased in seam allowance it's going to be very important Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and 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 take this this piece here and just move it over out of the way so we can go ahead and look at when we have a cut on the fold line. If I was to go ahead and contour this, it would also contour and, and increase the cut and fold line, which is going to change the pattern. We don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do here first is I'm actually going to duplicate this piece. Uh, Control J. I'm going to flip it we're unfolding this pattern piece. Press and hold shift as you move your mouse and it's going to move it straight over. We're going to line that line up right on the fold, release, and now we have an unfolded piece, but we still have this cut and fold line. If I was to contour uh, this entire piece right now here, I'll go ahead and group that together and let's go ahead and contour. Let's see what would happen. Okay, I'm going to increase it by half an inch miter I'm going to force close 
and let's go ahead and once we push enter on the radius that's when it's going to increase okay we saw it increase we get these funky little box here where it was cut on the fold and that's because it's technically two sides of the pattern that it's, that it's tracing so let's go ahead and undo that and I'm going to show you how you get rid of that fold line uh, in order to go ahead and contour from there okay all right let's kick off let's use the nodes okay if I double click click you're going to get your nodes I'm going to go right to where the fold line is and click the top node and we're going to break the curve and the bottom one we're going to break the curve and we're going to delete okay we're going to break the curve break the curve okay and we can delete that one and sometimes it'll let you delete that line that one did let me delete it and let's come back over here we didn't get that line deleted so i delete it sometimes you have to push delete a few times to make sure that middle line is there if you're having a hard time you could as long as you broke the curves in the nodes you can also use the select tool to select just that line and delete it all right now we still have two sides of the pattern and i do want to join these together so hold shift and click the nodes across the top make sure you get the opposite side as well so i have three nodes across the top i'm just going to click join curves so that's all considered one curve. And I think it looks like the bottom one is already joined since I joined the top top. So I don't have to join that. All right, let's come back and we are going to go to the contour tool. Now, again, I'm going to add a half an inch. It's on miter. I want it to force close. Once I push enter on the radius, it's going to increase. Now we still see that outline of where the original lines of the pattern are. We're going to go ahead and click bake appearance and ta-da, it's all finished right there. But what if you want a fold line? Sometimes it's nice to be able to cut on the fold. I like to add a fold line in. I'm going to do the pen tool. And I'm just going to click, there's a, there's a nice node here in the center, but let me show you. You could do it off center here. Hold shift, draw your line. It's going to give you a straight line. We're going to add another node here. It drew a line. Sometimes you have to make the line thicker. It is at four point. So my line should be pretty thick there. Um, let's click off and you can see there's a line drawn, but it's not, it's not where the fold line should be. What you're going to do is just select your pattern piece and the fold line. I had to actually ungroup this line. It was grouped with the pattern piece. So I'm going to, if you have to ungroup, ungroup it. I want to be able to select the fold line that I made and the pattern separately, and then we can align line that center. And it looks like there was just an extra line drawn there and I can get rid of that. I didn't know I drew an extra line there. So let's get rid of that. But now we have the fold line is right in the center. Now you can, Shift, Control G, group it back together, and you have a whole pattern piece in there together. So that was kind of how to get rid of the fold line and then add in the fold line as well. Okay, let's talk about um, another piece here about what do we do with those extra cut lines for sleeves or shorts, or what do we do with those when we're adding the seam allowance? Okay, here I am with the Lowland Kids knotted overalls they are darling on kids absolutely love them i went ahead and already removed the fold line and let's go ahead and do our contour i need to change the units because i forgot to do that when i opened up a new pattern and let's go ahead and force close let's go ahead and see what this looks like oh great um, some sizes were giving me a little bit of trouble, so try it on other sizes if you're having a hard time and see if it is that. Let's go ahead and bake our appearance. And now we have these shorty lines and short lines just kind of floating off in the middle of nowhere. Um, let's go ahead and fix that. There are two ways to, that we can do that. One, sometimes if it's just a straight line, you can use just their select tool um, and move the line where it needs to be. Sometimes it's that simple. Just drawing the straight line here. Now with the curves, I like to um, duplicate that curve just so that I can see where the original line is. And if I try to use the move tool, you're gonna see it's kind of changing the shape of it. I don't quite get the exact shape. 
you can rotate it. Um, you don't have a lot of control over it though. So on, on this other side, I'm going to show you how you would actually do that with um, just using the nodes. I went ahead and I duplicated it. Let's come over to the nodes. And now you can actually take those nodes and you can stretch it down to where um, maybe that curve, I can zoom in here a little bit here. You can see where the curve would come to on the new uh, seam allowance and where it would come to on the seam allowance. And then we have these handles here with the, the dots and that's gonna take your curve and we can bring it up. We can match it with the curve that it was on originally. And now it lines up exactly with um, the original curve. So we can zoom out and there you have it. It is completed. The, those lines go out to your new seam allowance line. Thank you for joining us today.